am actually so excited because I have such a fun project that I'm going to do this weekend. I have been obsessed with watching YouTube videos with the houses whose lights go to Christmas music. It's become a little bit of an obsession for me and I decided to do a little research and figure out how I can do the same thing on my house. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and ordered a few things and I'm going to chop doing this little project into phases. The first phase is going to be for me to install the Christmas lights on my house. I'm gonna do the outside border of my trim. Now I should clarify, these are not Christmas lights I'll be installing. These are LED RGB light strips. So I plan to put those on the edge of my house. The next step I'm going to do is make them do some colors. Now I'm not necessarily gonna do it to music right away. I'm going to just be making the lights do some cool things. I do plan on hooking these up to a computer and that will be in a later video. I think I'll still be one up over my neighbors because my lights will be doing things that theirs cannot. Here are some of the things that I've went ahead and purchased to do phase one of my project. Everything that I have here I've purchased from Amazon and I actually got it within like two days which is great. I love being an Amazon Prime member. Now the first thing that I purchased is some LED light strips. These light strips are about 15 feet long and they are RGB in color. Now some LED strips have RGB plus white, but I have chosen not to do that for this project. The protocol that these are using is WS2811. Different LED strips use different protocols and that protocol is what actually tells each of the lights when to turn off and on, but that's the one I've chosen to use in this project. The other thing to know is I've gone with 12 volts. LED strips can come in 5 and 12 volts most commonly. I'm going to use 12. I feel like bigger power is better. The other pieces that I've purchased is a power supply. A power supply is needed to produce the 12 volts that the lights run on. These are needed so that you can convert the power coming out of your outlet, which is about 110 to 120 volts AC into 12 volts DC. These are not normal Christmas lights that you plug into the wall. They have to have a separate power supply to run them. This power supply should run about seven strands of 15 foot long LED strips. Now it's recommended that you only use about 75% of their available capability, which means I will probably run only about five strands of 15 foot of the LED light strands per power supply. These controllers are really cheap on Amazon. These controllers are what produce the signal, the data line if you will, over the LED strips to make the lights go in different sequences of colors. I picked this one up for about $30. What's neat about this controller is it has many different effects for the lights so they'll change and do different series of patterns. Or you can hook up an MP3 player, an iPad, or even your computer's laptop to the auxiliary input here and it will supposedly make the lights go to the music that is being played. So we might try that initially and see how well it works. Again, I've just purchased this as a temporary solution so that once I install the lights on the outside of my house, I can see something. If you don't have a controller and you just buy the LED strips, you're not going to get anything out of them. You have to have a controller which sends the data signal which it makes the colors move around and flash around in series. So as I lay out my LED strips here, I want to point out a few things that are really important for you to understand. There are about three to four wires on an LED light strip, and I'm going to go through really quickly what they are. There's usually a red wire, which is power, and that would be 12 volts in this case, and it's the positive polarity. There's a white wire, which is the negative polarity. Again, we're talking DC here. And there's also a green wire, which is the data wire. It's pretty easy to figure out which one is the data wire, because if you take away the positive and the negative wires, there's usually one left. Now, in some cases, there's an additional wire, and that's called the clock wire, but in this case, we're not using that. The arrows on the LED strip are pointing in a direction that the data wire power needs to flow. So in this case, my arrows are pointing down, so that means I'm going to connect my data wire only to this side. Interesting to know about LED strips, the longer the length of the LED strip, the more power that is consumed by the light. So if you think about it, each light in the series is consuming power. And when you start to get a whole bunch, by the time you get to the end of the light, the power has dissipated and there's not much left. So in most cases, what you do, with these LED strips is you have to connect two sources of power to it. One at the beginning and one at the end. Again, the data only can be done at the very beginning of the wire. It needs to flow in the direction that the arrows are. So what I plan to do is connect 
two of these LED strips together, which makes a total of about 30 feet. I plan to put power at the beginning, at the end, and I will only be connecting the data wire at the beginning of that strand. All right, now our first step is to connect our 110 volt power connection, which connects to any standard outlet in your house, into our power supply. If you look at the power supply, it's noted on here what each of the terminals do. Here I see ground, neutral, and line, and that's exactly what we're going to be connecting this to. How did I get this wire? I just took a standard PC connector, you know, the standard wire that connects to the back of a computer, and I cut the end off and I stripped the wire. It makes it really easy to, to decipher which connection goes to what terminal on here, and I'll quickly tell you what each color means. The white wire is the neutral connection, and the black wire is the line connection. Now the green wire is always ground. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these to my power supply. I like to make sure I get the wire really in there and make sure there's no extra wire hanging off because you can be electrocuted with the connection coming out of your house outlet. Our power connection from the outlet is connected to our power supply. What I'm gonna do here on the LED strips is red is positive and white is negative, DC. So I'm gonna look for the terminals on here. They are marked positive and negative. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect my LED strip into the power supply. Okay, we've got the power connected, and you'll notice that I still have this one little connection hanging off, and again, this is what I'm gonna use to connect my data. The power is connected through the red and white terminals, and on this connection, I'm gonna connect the data connection. Now, that is only one green wire, but my controller needs power from this also, so when I connect my controller into this connection, it will provide the controller with power, and it will send the data down the LED strip. On this, I had taken and threw in a few male connections here that I can just simply slide into my terminals on this um, connection here. And I have actually matched the colors. The positive is red, the data is green, and the white is negative. And you'll notice that these will just slide right into this terminal connection here, which makes it really convenient for me to at least test my LED strips. We have got the connector connected, which is going to inject the data signal down the line to control the LED lights and our power supply. All right, let's plug this thing in and see if we've got some pretty colors on our LED strips. Ooh, and yay, we've got, we've got some colors. That's exciting. Now, I believe on this controller, we can try changing a few different things. Um, by hitting the mode button, we can change our colors around. So this is really exciting. This means at least I can install lights on my house and I'll have some type of pattern so it will look like Christmas lights. It might not be going to the music yet, but it will look cool. All right, so let's go through a few of these different modes on here just for fun. You can see these are kind of lame, but when I install them to my computer, I'll be able to have individual control of every single pixel. Now, you use white to test to see if you have power throughout the whole LED strip. Now again, I have, I've taken one strip and connected an additional strip to it. So that's 15 feet, 15 feet, that makes 30 feet. Now what you'll see is the lights start to change colors. They go from white to yellow. That means that these are not getting enough power at the end, so I'll be having to inject 12 volts to the end of this line. By doing that, it will correct this and make the whole line a white color. So that's how you test to make sure you're getting power throughout the whole strip. All right, I think at this point, we are ready to install these on the outside of my house while it's nice out. It's supposed to snow later today, so I gotta get outside and install these. Now, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet, so I might have to figure out a crafty way to install them on the gutters, but this is pretty cool, I'm excited. Again, I got all these things off Amazon. I got them delivered in two days, which is great, and it's really simple to do. Thanks so much for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and turn notifications on so that you know when I upload a new video.